Hi guys. Um, what you're reading about for this week on chapter 20 is all about um, the history of foreign policy for the United States in the late 1800s into the early 1900s. But one of the biggest changes in foreign policy um, during that time for the United States is this focus more on imperialism. And so I just want to spend the next couple of minutes making sure that we understand what imperialism is all about and provide some early examples, background justifications for it. First, let's make sure we understand what the definition is. What do we mean by imperialism? Just very simply, we're talking about taking over other land or somehow exerting control um, abroad. Um, and so that's what we mean by imperialism. This was actually nothing new. Um, many other countries around the world were engaging in this. Um, this is a map as of 1900. You can see, for instance, if we look at the light green, um, Britain, you can see that they controlled India, Australia, um, parts of Africa. You can see the French controlled a lot of different parts of Africa and so on and so forth. Many different countries were engaging in imperialism or taking over other land, exerting some sort of control um, abroad. And so the United States wants to get in on this action as well. Um, they want to kind of be seen as a player on the world stage. Um, also, part of the reason for that is, if you recall, Frederick Jackson Turner's frontier thesis, um, kind of warning against the end of the frontier in the late 1800s. Well, um, the frontier does kind of go away, it disappears, as you can see by this map. In 1890, you can see that there were Americans settled in all of um, the mainland United States by that point. And so that helps explain also why people were looking to um, expand overseas. Um, in fact, there were some early examples of imperialism already in U.S. history, um, mainly um, the purchase of Alaska. This happened right after the Civil War. Um, Secretary of State Seward buys Alaska from Russia. Um, and many people made a mockery of this. They called it Seward's Folly, calling it like a joke. Here's a cartoon of Seward trying to calm Andrew Johnson, the president at the time. Um, in hindsight, of course, this was not a uh, mistake as we get numerous um, resources um, and benefits from having Alaska. But here is one of the earliest examples of the United States taking control um, or exerting control um, abroad. Um, why does the United States get involved in this? There are three main reasons. Um, I call them the three M's that you should know. First is money, okay? Everything always comes down to money. Uh, by taking over other land or exerting control abroad, you can have gain more uh, materials. You can also increase your market, who you can sell things to. So that's going to be a driving force as to why the United States wants to acquire these territories um, abroad or at least exercise control abroad. The second M is military. Um, there's a, a strategic purpose for us taking over other territories in that we could have refueling stations for our ships, have military bases um, around the world so that if something flares up in a region, it's not going to take us forever to get there. Um, Alfred, T, Alfred T. Mahon is going to be a leading advocate for us um, engaging in um, this imperialism, taking over other territory for military purposes. And then the last M is going to be mission, that there are some people that are pushing for us to do this because they feel that um, American culture, um, Christianity is superior um, than other cultures and religions, and that we have a duty to spread it to other people. Josiah Strong, one of our Quizlet terms, is a great example of that. Josiah Strong was a um, popular um, uh, Christian minister, and you can see from this first quote that he says that one of the big needs of mankind is Christianity. And then he goes on to say in the second quote on the right um, that it is just kind of inevitable that um, it is the most powerful races are going to spread um, and kind of saying that it's going to be a survival of the fittest. So he was a strong advocate of um, imperialism and specifically spreading Christianity um, uh, as a as a justification for it, you see that term survival of the fittest. This ter this idea of international Darwinism comes out at this time and is used also to kind of justify um, imperialism. So again, these are the three M's that you should know: money, military, and mission. And by mission, I mean kind of religion or um, American culture feeling that it's superior to others. Not everyone is going to be in favor of this. Um, one outspurk outspoken um, anti-imperialist, of course, will be William Jennings Bryan. Remember the same guy who um, represented the populace in 1896? He runs again for the presidency in 1900, again loses this time to incumbent President McKinley. Um, but he was an outspoken 
um, uh, anti-imperialists. So not everyone was in favor of it. In fact, there are many debates over what we should do. Should we take over this other territory or not? Um, there are many political cartoons that emerged at this time. In class, we'll look at some other examples. Uh, but this cartoon you can see is a very pro-imperialism, showing that look at the before on the top, look at what happens once the U.S. exerts control or influence over these territories. But at the same token, there are also a lot of um, people and cartoons representing the other side. Here's a cartoon showing the anti-imperialism side that by taking over other territories, um, it's more of a nuisance. It's kind of a problem. So um, lots of debates that ensued. If we fast forward to today, you can kind of see the effects of this imperialism that started in the um, you know mid to late 1800s. Um, not only do we have territories um, beyond our immediate borders today, um, but we also have military bases, right, with um, American servicemen and women stationed all over the world. You could argue that that's like an effect of imperialism today. So how did we get to this point of having all these military bases, having territories um, beyond our immediate borders? That that's what um, the rest of the APUSH teachers are going to explain to you now, including starting um, with Mr. Irvin, who's going to explain how we actually go to war um, with Spain um, for imperialism, for us in, um, to gain additional territory. So hopefully this at least um, gives you a better understanding of kind of the background, the overview of imperialism and what it is. All right. Thanks, guys.